So why didn't I like this episode as much as I have the last few? Hey Star Trek fans, Dan Gunther here bringing you my reaction and review to the latest episode of Star Trek Discovery, Season 3, Episode 6, Scavengers. As usual, the first part of this will be spoiler free, but after that I'll give a warning and get into the spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled for this episode, be sure to click off around then. So I've made no secret of the fact that I really enjoyed the first few episodes of season three. I think the direction the show has been taking has been a really welcome one and a lot of fun with some really interesting plot threads and uh, storylines for our characters. I think the jump to the future was a really bold and uh, interesting move for Discovery, uh, opening up a lot of possibilities and providing us with some really interesting uh, new and different looks at what would be more familiar in a past setting. I also made the comment last week, uh, either on here or on the Positively Trek podcast, I can't remember which, that there have been no clunkers yet in season three. And while I by no means think that this particular episode is a clunker, it is definitely one that I enjoyed less than the episodes that came before, most especially the uh, two most immediately previous episodes. So why is that? Well, I mean, there are a few things that I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, first of all, the basic plot plot of the episode. Some people have said it's it's a plot we've seen before and, and is very familiar. I don't think I had a problem with that. I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, familiar plot lines being reused in, in interesting and different ways. Uh, it might be that the way that this was executed felt uh, a little bit unengaging. I did, for some reason, find myself a little more distracted watching this episode than I usually am during Discovery, uh, both times that I watched the episode so far. I have a friend who is very well versed in cinematic terms and, and theory and that sort of thing. And I really enjoy watching Star Trek with him. Uh, he's not caught up to this point yet, so I haven't had a chance to watch this episode with him. And I feel like he might give me some insights into exactly what it is about how this episode was shot or put together or edited that may have contributed to some of this uh, ambivalent feeling. Uh, as it stands, I'm, I'm not educated enough in uh, cinematography and, and, and filmmaking to be able to to say exactly what it is, but there's clearly some element that just didn't engage me as much as the previous episodes have. As I've said in a couple other places, I felt like maybe the seams were showing a little bit too much on this episode. I in the last few episodes, I've had the real sense of being completely immersed in the world of Star Trek Discovery. And in this episode, I at times had the feeling that I was watching actors being filmed uh, on a set. And you don't necessarily want that. And and again, this isn't the this isn't saying that this episode is horrible or anything like that. It's merely that the the episodes that immediately preceded it have been so spectacular, in my opinion, that uh, they definitely influence my opinion of this episode. So I I would say the more charitable way of saying this is this episode is a little closer on the spectrum to the average side than the last few episodes have been, which were, in my opinion, very much above average. So with all of that being said, I think I'll get into the spoilers now. So if you've been watching without having seen the episode, you may wish to click away at this point. If you don't care about spoilers, by all means, watch on. So the plot involves uh, a, basically a rescue mission. Um, Book is being held prisoner by the Emerald Chain. And Burnham goes on an unsanctioned mission along with Giorgio taking Book's ship uh, to rescue him, as well as to procure a black box, more evidence as to uh, what caused the burn and, and maybe try and find a point of origin for the burn. It's been found out through other black boxes that the burn did not occur simultaneously and uh, apparently there's some discrepancies in when exactly the ships that were affected were destroyed, indicating that there is a possible point of origin that could be located. So Burnham and Giorgio set off and uh, catch up with Book at this uh, trading post of salvage, uh, kind of graveyard of ships. I do have to say the, the choice of mostly 23rd century, actually all 23rd century ships, was uh, definitely an interesting one. I'm, I'm assuming this is not all ships that were, you know, destroyed by the burn or, or something like that, but maybe a salvage yard that existed uh, pre-burn that uh, these guys have now gotten their hands on, like uh, Quaylor 2 in the Unification two-part episode, uh, or, uh, you know, the site of a battle like Wolf 359 or something like that. 
the rescue plot plays out fairly um typically like you would see in a lot of times this plot play out they manage to get book out of there and drop the security fence uh, allowing the prisoners to escape we do meet one interesting prisoner named rin who is actually a former member of the emerald chain an andorian uh, who fell out of favor and had his uh, antennae uh, removed this was an interesting character very soft-spoken very um, submissive in in personality type and I, I think because of the experiences he's undergone interestingly enough played by the husband of Mary Wiseman who plays Tilly so I've heard a lot about him through interviews with Mary Wiseman apparently he's a huge Star Trek fan I must have been absolutely thrilled to be able to play a role on Discovery the most interesting thing about this part of the story I think is the continued uh, hints as to what's going on with Giorgio. She's experiencing some sort of flashbacks to an event that uh, took place in the mirror universe. And it's still unclear if this was brought on by her conversation with Kovic. I have to imagine that it is whether he did something to her or that kind of awakened something in her. I'm not sure, but yeah, she's undergoing the, these flashbacks. We get little hints of it. We see, you know, bloody hands, a bloody body, a bloody knife and the, the Terran Empire logo and at one point she says San I thought when I initially watched it she said son like uh, you know your one's son or daughter uh, but apparently San S-A-N is what she says and uh, thank you to um, viewer Marg who brought this up uh, she sent me a message this morning and I still have to write her back and tell her thanks uh, that uh, reminding me that this was a character in the discovery novel Die Trying from uh, Giorgio's past uh, Die Trying a terrific novel by John Jackson Miller I definitely have to go back and review that uh, and, and, and find that character because I have a vague recollection, but not a lot of the details as to what that's about. So interesting bringing that in. And I know John Jackson Miller at the time we interviewed him for Literary Treks at the time uh, said there were elements that play a part in season three. And, and that was not one of them that I thought would would be one. So I'll have to go back and pay closer closer attention to that character. We also have through this the the apparent beginning of the Burnham book uh, romantic relationship. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like this was somewhat inevitable. It's clear they have deep feelings for each other, hence uh, Burnham's defying orders to go on this mission. I think the direction of this was a little too flowery. Again, this is part of where I'm seeing the seams of the episode, and I get the feeling that this is a camera looking at two people rather than just two people in this moment when they they have this uh, embrace and kiss in the elevator um turbo lift <laughs> pardon me uh so yeah that was uh I, I don't know it's it it feels like how do i put this and I, I don't want this to sound overly negative but it feels like characters kind of walking through a plot and and hitting the the beats rather than just being characters living in this plot and and again i don't know what is contributing to this feeling but it just it, it didn't capture my attention or feel as authentic as other episodes have so once again throughout this is kind of the specter of burnham disobeying orders and going rogue once again uh, hanging over the 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 plot of the episode and the position she puts saru in is very unfair and and i do have to admit that that might have uh, that definitely colored my opinion of the episode as well i feel like with the progress made last week with burnham very much operating within the rules and accomplishing great things uh this episode feels like a step back and it's very clearly meant to you know this is the next step on the character's journey and i have to admit to being disappointed in the choices that she makes again this is by design this is just one small chapter in the overall story of discovery so i'm not holding that against uh the episode too much it just definitely um left a bad taste in my mouth again like i say i, I think it's supposed to the end result of Burnham losing uh, her position as first officer, I think, was very much a, a needed step. I think that was the right decision, as Burnham herself tells Saru as well at the end. Uh, disappointing. Um, I, I wonder how long Burnham is going to remain in Starfleet. I think the arc is going to be that she comes back and becomes a, a great Starfleet officer again. They could go the other way, though. I, I really don't know. But it, it's interesting to see this story, and uh, I'm, I am curious to see it play out. It's just this intermediate step, of course, uh, is disheartening, for sure. So let's put all of that to one side 
and talk now about the things that I really enjoyed about this episode. I did already mention the Giorgio aspect. I really enjoyed that. This is a character who uh, I find myself surprised that this episode elicited sympathy from me for her, uh, which, you know, that's interesting. <laughs> Not a character I would expect to feel a lot of sympathy for, but in her position as, um, Having come from the mirror universe, uh, there's one point where, you know, these flashbacks are introducing a vulnerability and she has a very frank discussion with Burnham where, you know, Burnham tells her that this this is not the mirror universe. A weakness like this is not automatically a vulnerability. It's not automatically a knife in your back like it would be in the mirror universe. But Giorgio has a hard time letting go of that mindset and shows no signs of doing so anytime soon. And it struck me that Giorgio is very much a, a, a an abuse victim, but the, the abuser was her universe, which is interesting because, yeah, the the PTSD or the, the, the long-lasting effects on her personality are very clear, and you can't survive in the mirror universe without that mindset. So it, that's really hard to let go of. And I did feel sympathy for her in that moment that, you know, she's still of this mindset that any perceived vulnerability will mean that, you know, the sharks were, will circle and uh, take her out. So definitely interesting. I, I'm really enjoying Giorgio so far this season and especially in this episode. I also want to call out the scenes between Adira and Stamets and then Stamets and Culber. Really great scenes. I love that Stamets and uh, Adira have this shared connection of um, being close to loved ones who have died but are not quite gone. I thought that was that was an interesting uh, little thread for those two to bond over. And I, I like the mentor-mentee relationship that's kind of forming. And then afterwards, the scene with Culber, where Stamets and, and Culber are talking about Adira and this new role that Stamets has in her life. I thought that was a really great scene and, and just shows the love between these two people and the understanding of uh, where they're coming from and that sort of thing. So, yeah, Stamets... Uh, having that realization that he can be a positive influence in this young person's life. I thought that was really great. The upgrades to Discovery, interesting to see. I'm, I'm curious about the detached nacelles. Uh, I think Saru has a line that they uh, improve maneuverability or something like that. I, I kind of want to see this in action and how this all works. Uh, I also want to see what this looks like when the, the Discovery does a spore jump what that exactly looks like but yeah so interesting um the ncc 1031-a now traditionally in star trek when you have a new starship is when you add the a and and an upgrade or a refit does not necessitate the adding of the letter i think this case is unique though because in starfleet records of course the discovery was destroyed uh, and you know all record of it is supposed to be is supposed to be lost and the admiral doesn't want the knowledge of the spore drive or the time travel to go beyond the room as he says at the beginning of the episode so i think you know maintaining the shroud that this is an all new ship that uh is, it carries the name Discovery. I think that is most likely the reason for the um, addition of the dash A. Why they're still using the old uniforms, which, you know, someone would be like, why are they using, you know, millennia old uniforms? Uh, I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm interested to see if Discovery eventually gets the new uniforms or not. Not a huge consideration for me. I, I like the Discovery uniforms. I think they're very unique. And I think it's very expensive to give, you know, tailored uniforms, new uniforms to the cast. So I, I expect we'll just see the Discovery uniforms with the new badge. Uh, the new badges and the upgrades to the bridge, of course, really interesting. I thought that was a lot of fun. And of course, the joke of Linus uh, not quite getting the um, the transporter functionality perfect. That was fun. Uh, a little bit kind of eye rolling it sometimes when you had the cliche interrupting of the kiss thing, but still a lot of fun. Uh, one, one of the aspects that I definitely enjoyed about this episode. So how about all of you out there? I want to hear from you. What did you think of scavengers? Did you have the same concerns that I did? Uh, or was this one that you really, really enjoyed as much as previous episodes or even more so? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Of course, as always to the Patreon supporters, you are what make this channel possible. Thank you so much for all of your help and support. To everyone else, thank you for watching. First of all, I think that's the most important thing you can do. Uh, if you feel this video is worthy, 
feel free to give it a like and a share uh, and subscribe to Kurt Rats Productions if you haven't already for um, more videos like this, more live streams that I do with Brandy Jackala every Saturday evening for new episodes of, Dis of Discovery. Those have been a lot of fun. Uh, we've also talked about some really important, deep, non-Star Trek topics, which uh, is interesting. So join us for that. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, as always, live long and prosper.